terrorists in prisons in northeast Syria with their families held in separate camps. Our correspondent Quentin Somerville has been to one prison and spoken to British men accused of being former IS fighters. The Islamic State group was born in the shadows. Prisons were its breeding ground, its recruitment centres. Thousands of its supporters are now jailed in northeastern Syria. As Turkey advances, they're still locked up, but in harm's way. The conditions are appalling, but these are the best prisons the Kurds have. For years, they've told the West to take back their jihadists. Few countries did, and now the prisons are overwhelmed. Escape is a growing threat. In one crowded cell, we were told we'd find Ishak Mustafi from East London. He's part of a gang that joined IS from Westminster University. He's accused of being a committed jihadist who fought with IS until the very end. He claims, like others, to have been tortured in prison. We have demands, demands as humans, and there's, you know, stuff that needs to be you know, provided as rights as a prisoner. We are under the coalition, true? We are under the coalition. But British and American troops are pulling back to avoid clashes with their NATO ally, Turkey. So the men and boys of the Islamic State sit and wait. The Kurds are left to contain this threat alone while fighting for their lives. The prisons, now undermanned, are a secondary concern, they warn. Some of these jails will fall into Turkish hands. One has already been shelled. In another prison is Ibrahim Akbal from Bradford. Facebook posts show him armed and dressed for combat. He came as a teenager. His uncle was killed fighting for IS. 18 members of his family joined the cause. He wants to go home, but says IS is still waiting to strike. I think they will come back, I'll be honest with you. They will come back. They have enough uh, territories till now. They have ter territories. They have they're the, in the deserts in Iraq. And I believe whenever they have a chance, uh, they're, they're going to come out and they're going to probably do something even, even worse. Outside the prisons are camps for IS women and their children. This is our hole. Extra guards were sent here this week after a number of women escaped. Some were recaptured, but others are still on the run. It took an international coalition and thousands of Kurdish and Arab lives to put these men behind bars. But the West has abandoned them. This is a counter-terrorism crisis. These men aren't just prisoners, they're an Islamic State army waiting to rise again. Quentin Somerville, BBC News. President Trump has faced a lot of criticism over his decision to withdraw U.S. troops. Our North America editor, John Sopel, joins me now. And John, as the fighting intensifies, so too does the criticism of Donald Trump. Yes, Sophie, last night we had Donald Trump putting out a statement that he thought that the incursion into uh, northern Syria was a bad idea. What's emerged today is that there was a furious internal row within the administration over the wording of that statement. The Department of Defence, the State Department thinking there should have been something much more stronger, more threats to President Erdogan if he went ahead with this. But Donald Trump insisted that that wasn't up for grabs. And so the criticism from some of his most loyal supporters Porters has, as you say, intensified. Senator Lindsey Graham, who's normally a cheerleader for Donald Trump, uh, tweeting this morning directly to him. Mr. President, your decision regarding Syria is having grave consequences to our national security and that of our allies. Not satisfied with that, he went on to say ISIS will return and President Assad of Syria and Iran will go stronger to the detriment of the US, Israel and the world. Now, Donald Trump has just been speaking to us a few moments ago uh, as he flew out of the White House and says he hopes to be able to broker a deal between the Kurds and the Turks. He's also said that he will flatten the Turkish economy if they go too far. I met a senior military commander today and said, well, what does too far mean? He gave me a facial expression, which, if I interpreted correctly, said, was roughly, haven't got a clue.
on North America. As I said, John Sopel, thank you.